Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for sticking in this long. You all made it. Almost over. Um, the perk of staying this long is that you're going to get to do a little meditation with me, but I'm just going to talk a little bit first. Um, well, closing meditation. Okay, yeah. So what I want to talk about is something that um, one of my teachers said to me uh, that really struck with me. She said, at this time where we are in life now, we cannot afford the luxury of a single negative thought. And at the time, I kind of didn't really think much about it. And it, it just kind of kept swirling around in my mind. And when I was teaching and I was talking, it, it kept coming to me. And in the last week, it's really been coming to me. And I thought, well, what exactly does that mean, the luxury of a negative thought? I speak a lot about suffering. I call myself a recovering suffering addict. I feel like more than any other addiction right now, what people are most addicted to, what we are taught, what we are bred to be addicted to, is our attachment to our stories and our suffering. And the interesting thing about the mind is that every thought that we have has a polarity. We live in a world of polarity, opposites, good, bad, light, dark. And so every single thought that you have will immediately split off into a negative and a positive. And the way that we are wired is that we will automatically go to the negative first. And this is not a bad thing. We need to come from a place of that negative mind because that's what enables us to kind of balance out what's coming and have good judgment and not walk around thinking everything is rainbows and unicorns and not pay attention to the big picture. What we don't want is to get magnetized and to, to that negativity. And because we are so addicted to our own suffering and our own negativity, almost in a way that it's kind of cool, you know? Everybody in my circle, in my generation, everybody, you know, would sit around and have wine and people would be like, oh, my therapist this, I just saw this new guru that, did you read this new book that? And it's like, it becomes this sheer circle of our suffering and what we're doing to kind of support that and encourage that. And we luxuriate in it. We really do. And so what happens is when we have a decision or we have a thought and we go into that negative place, the brain then starts to look for all these reasons and stories and feelings to support that negative thought. So instead of just having that moment of the negative thought and then being pulled, bounced out of it, we luxuriate in it. We make up stories about it. We carry it with us, then we share it with other people, and then we give it to them, and then they give us their stories, and then all of a sudden we're all having this like, big swim in this ocean of negativity that we're luxuriating in it like, luxuriating in it like it's like some kind of high-end spa. And we don't even realize we're doing it, and the media supports that, and marketing supports that, and our girlfriends support that, and our boyfriends support that, and everything supports that. And so what, uh, ideally, the goal is to get to a place where we're not swimming in that negative place, we're strengthening the opposite place, we're strengthening the positive so that when we go into the negative, we're immediately magnetized back into a place of positivity where we can take action from. So you make a decision with the negative mind and then you take action from the positive mind and it kind of balances itself out, if that makes sense. Um, and so that's kind of what I love about this day is that this day is all these people coming up and talking about what they've done, their tools, their workout, to strengthen that positive mind. And there are many, many, many ways to do it. My, my research has kind of led me to a place where I have a little poo-poo platter of techniques and tools that I use, meditation being the foundation of everything. And I believe everybody in the world should meditate and can meditate um, because we're all just these like people walking around with these giant waterfalls pouring on our heads of thoughts that we have no awareness of, and we're, we're walking around not even realizing that we're drowning in our thoughts. And the point of meditation is not to remove all trace of thought from your brain. The point of meditation is to get to a place where you can sit with enough space comfortably to observe the waterfall. 
And this is so much easier to do than it sounds. Um, so of course, there's many, many different kinds of meditations, and there's breath meditations, and there's mantra meditations. Today, what I'm going to run everybody through is a very, very super, super simple three minutes, that's it, three minutes, longer than it takes to wait for Facebook to load on your phone or Twitter, a meditation for addiction. And what this meditation does is it short circuits the pathway of the negative thought to the addiction. It interrupts that point. So with this practice, and you can do it every day, three minutes, it'll get you to a place where it will break your addictive patterns. Now, I know people that have used it to stop smoking, to help with drinking, to help with actual physical addictions. And when I first learned it, I was like, well, I'm not addicted to anything, so I don't need to use it, until I became aware of how addicted I was to my own shtick. And so I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just give this a try. And before I knew it, I wasn't, I wasn't speaking as negatively as I thought. I wasn't thinking as negatively as I did before. And I went like, holy shit, this really, really works. Maybe I should start teaching it to other people. And I have, and I've yet to meet one person that it hasn't worked for. Uh, the only thing it may do is breed an addiction to not wanting to do the addiction meditation, but that's when you just make yourself just sit down and do it. So we're all gonna do it together, all right? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so what you're gonna do is, and I'm gonna sit down so I can do it with you in my short dress. You're gonna take your fingers and curl them into the pads of your hands, your thumbs sticking out, and then you're gonna find that little divity spot between your brow bone and your temple. So when you clench your teeth together, you should feel something moving under the pad of your thumb. Does everybody feel that? So you're gonna keep your front teeth closed, and then in your mind, you're gonna silently repeat these four things, sa, ta, na, ma. And each time you repeat that, you're gonna clench your back teeth together. So the front teeth stay closed and the back teeth clench. And every time you clench, you should feel something moving under your fingers. So you close your eyes and repeat mentally sa, ta, na, ma as you clench. And we're gonna do this for three minutes.
Inhale. And exhale. So now you all have a little bit of homework. If you choose, if you feel like maybe breaking the addiction and not wanting to luxuriate in your negative thought or just experimenting, maybe there's something you've been wanting to give up and it's just been like too much work to do all the other things that you know you should do but you're not doing. This is just something you can do even in traffic, you know, when you're stuck in traffic at a light. Try it every day, three minutes a day, for 40 days. Just 40 days. And if it doesn't do anything, you can tweet me and say, you're full of shit, and I'll say, cool, I accept that. But if it does start to work, you know, cool. What's the worst that can happen? It won't work. What's the best that can happen? It will work. Um, and I would love to hear your stories, and I would love to get your feedback. So you can tweet me, you can Instagram me, you can get in touch with me, you can send a carrier pigeon. Um, and thank you all very much. Thanks for your time. <laughs>